Welcome back friends. This will be the sixth lecture of microbiology and in this sixth lecture we are going to talk about obligate intracellular parasites. There are many different types of organisms, microorganisms which are not bacteria but they can put severe harm and cause infection and diseases like rickettsia, chlamydia, mycoplasma. We are going to talk about this kind of intracellular parasites in this particular lecture. So stay tuned and watch this lecture. The unusual characteristics of prokaryotes are listed in this slide. So think about it, few are free living non-pathogenic bacteria who don't harm us. We are safe from them, they live their own life, we live our own life. But there are photosynthetic bacteria, they use photosynthesis, can synthesize required nutrients from inorganic compounds. So there are then, then separated you know free living non pathogenic means free living bacteria means they can make their own energy source they can they can use it they produce their energy they use it on the other hand there are pathogenic ones the pathogenic ones can be you know either it's photosynthetic means they have chlorophylls inside them they can produce energy or there are those who take up energy from inorganic compounds but they can make us sick they are harmful to us an example for photosynthetic cyanobacteria, we call them blue-green algae as well. They are generally aquatic and they can harvest sun energy. Okay, Then green sulfur, green purple sulfur bacteria. Then gliding and fruiting bacteria. And then finally carry out more photosynthesis than all plants combined. So think about it. This bacteria that we've talked about, they carry out more photosynthesis than any plants combined so think about it cyanobacteria green and purple sulfur bacteria gliding and fruiting bacteria they have a totally different range of metabolic processes going on inside their body inside their cell actually because their body means cell because they have unique electron transport chains which is involved in the energy production harvesting sun's energy photon energy to produce the chemical energy utilizing that chemical energy to grow to metabolize to live okay and some more example if you if you put what is the medical significance of this unusual forms of bacteria one example if for this unusual bacteria is rickettsia they are obligate intracellular parasite just like the viruses you know obligate intracellular parasites generally whenever you say obligate intercellular intracellular parasites we always say virus but there are some bacteria rickettsia very tiny gram negative bacteria most of them are pathogens in fact all of them they are obligate intracellular pathogens cannot survive or multiply outside of a host so it it behaves like a virus cannot survive or multiply outside of a host they need a healthy host to multiply and survive and they are pathogenic causes huge Area of diseases. One such example, rickettsia. Rickettsia causes Rocky Mountain spotted fever. Rickettsia proazaki is there. There are different species of rickettsia. You can read that because uh, sometimes they ask questions uh, from this part in Gate, Nate, IIT Jam, all this place. So you can read the species of rickettsia and associated diseases. You can easily find it in Google Images, the, the table. Another one is chlamydia. Chlamydia is tiny obligate intracellular parasite again not transmitted by any arthropods and if we took two different examples of chlamydia and what they cause chlamydia trachomatis severe eye infection and one of the most common sexually transmitted diseases so they are transmitted by sexual transmission STDs not by any vectors like arthropods no rickettsia on the other hand can be transported by the vectors but not the, uh, not uh, chlamydia Trachomatis cause severe eye infection, it can be congenital. Chlamydial pneumonia causes lung infection, pneumonia. Pneumonia can be caused by other bacteria as well, the common bacteria causing pneumonia. But chlamydia can also cause pneumonia and lung infection and that complications even more. Okay. So think about this unusual form of bacteria. I've listed two rickettsia and chlamydia and we have already talked about the mycoplasma earlier. So when you think about this competitive exams for PhD and for MTechs, 
and for entering into IIT exams you should prepare these portions because there's nothing much to be explained the unusual bacteria we talk about mycoplasma talk about chlamydia talk about rickettsia you get a table which explains all the variety of chlamydia mycoplasma rickettsia their associated diseases and what diseases they actually cause it's very very important to know so i've listed this table so that you get to know about all the diseases caused by rickettsia chlamydia and viruses and actually i just want you to give you an overview about the differences between the rickettsia chlamydia and virus because as i told you that all these three are obligate uh, intracellular parasites but what's the fundamental difference you think about it uh, so let me take a color first you can see here that uh, i put viruses at the end and then the rickets and chlamydia are placed side by side so the property whether they contain dna or rna rickets here contain both that means you know it's bacteria so it has its dna and it can transcribe it into rna which chlamydia can also do but you know viruses cannot have dna and rna both inside them they either have dna or have rna that's the major difference Secondly, multiplication by binary fission is only possible for rickettsia and chlamydia because they are bacteria but not for virus. Cell wall contains muramic acid means you know N acetyl muramic acid. NAM for rickettsia and chlamydia yes but virus no because they don't have that kind of cell wall. Ribosome present for both the bacteria rickettsia and chlamydia but not for virus metabolically active enzymes not present in virus because virus don't carry any of any of this just carry the genetic material so that's present for chlamydia and rickettsia both inhibition by antibacterial enzymes yes because rickettsia and chlamydia are bacteria so they can be inhibited by antibacterial enzymes or anti antibiotics but not for virus virus will not be killed by the antibiotic they need antivirals to control them atp synthesis property now this is something which differs rickettsia with chlamydia that's the only major difference between rickettsia and chlamydia because both are bacteria but rickettsia can produce atp but chlamydia cannot produce atp and by definition of virus they cannot produce atp at all so the only difference between chlamydia and rickettsia is rickettsia can produce atp can synthesize atp but chlamydia cannot do that so chlamydia is associated with uh, the largest causing std in united states okay but rickettsia on the other hand can cause so many types of disease depending upon the species of of the bacteria and the location the geographic location where it's working so that's why i put uh, the different species list for rickettsia and their associated diseases and uh, if there is any vector what is that vector we also put that here because a lot of times questions are asked from this rickettsia species so species rickettsia rickettsi causes rocky mountain spotted fever the distribution is north central and south america means of transmission is by a tick bite so it's a arthropod this arthropod bite tick bite tick or arthropod in this case acting as a reservoir you know a, a vector while in case of chlamydia there is no arthropod linked as a vector the the direct process of transmitting the disease from one human to the other human via sexual intercourse okay rickettsia conori mediterranean spotted fever okay israeli spotted fever indian tick typhus okay all of this and this is also caused by the tick bite distribution europe asia africa india israel sicily russia rickettsia typhi causes murine typhus distribution is worldwide so it's it's a huge large scale infection infected with flea bite you know flea feces that's how it's infected generally flea when sit on our food the flea feces that's how they infect and that's why this cause a worldwide outbreak of typhus on the other hand rickettsia felis cat flea ricket the the disease we call it cat flea rickettsiosis and flea borne typhus okay and again this is due to cat flea bite which is also uh, shifting the host from cat and then humans altogether also the outbreak is worldwide 
So you can see this rickettsia is not very small. There are many species variations and based on the variated species, they can cause different diseases even throughout the portions of the world. So it's really something to worry about. And as it has a little different features from the bacteria, so it's very difficult to treat. Although antibiotics are enough to kill rickettsia. Okay, so just keep this in your mind so that a question come in the exam. I hope I have explained the obligate intracellular parasites uh, quite simply. So if you like this video, please hit the like button, share this video with your friends and do not forget to subscribe. That's the only thing we ask for. Please do subscribe.